Shazaz Creations, your one-stop shop when it comes to customization. Totes, tees, tumblers, hats, and more. Looking for a customized gift idea for a graduation, birthday party, baby shower, or just a unique creation of your own? Check out Shazaz Creations as seen here on Whitney D TV. Female, black owned. Use my promo in the description box down below and let her know Whitney D of Whitney D TV sent you. Thank you. Bye. What's up, Jewel Gang? So I would like to address this white woman who goes by the name of Nikki Marie on Facebook. Her page is private, but her DMs are wide open. You see, this scarecrow thought it'd be a good idea to slide in a black woman's DM, bully and harass her over having a small disability. Pause and read. Pause and read. Pause and read. You see, this beautiful black woman, you decided to harass for having a small disability when being compared to you is walking art. Black women are literally walking Picassos, which is why snow roaches like you envy us so much. You look like the cashier at HEB that has to call the manager every five seconds because you're too stupid to work the register. You look like splattered bird shit dried up on the side of someone's car. You couldn't match her beauty if she gave you an audio booklet with a step-by-step -step description on how to do so. In between me and you, I'm the bigger bully. Sit your ass down.
What up, what up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, for those that are watching the playback. Um, welcome to the channel. If you're new, don't be. Go ahead and click the subscribe button to be a part of the Witness Gang to join the Witness Nation. Now, let's get into it. Hello, you guys, and welcome to the channel. If you're new, don't be. Hey, what up, everybody? I pray you guys are having a super stupid, blessed, and highly favored Wednesday, okay? Not for nothing. Um, this is a pre-recording, so I can't see the wonderful people that are here in the chat. However, hello, everybody, and welcome to Whitney D TV. okay? I should be interacting with you guys, though. So, hey, 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 everybody, okay? Not for nothing. I wanted to get this... Um, transcript reading out of the way because tonight i pray you guys are joining me for my first installment of where were the parents wednesday uh that's right you guys tune in tonight at 7 30 p.m central standard time right here same bad place same bad time uh for our first installment of where were the parents as we uh take a look at where why sister situations that calls for us to look and ask where were the parents, okay? That is going to be tonight again at 7.30 p.m. Standard, uh, I mean, Central Standard Time. And it's already scheduled. So you guys can um, actually click the link that I will provide in the chat. Um, or you can just head on over to my channel, uh, click on the um the pre-schedule and you can set your reminder so you will not forget just in case of sometimes YouTube uh, forget to send out that notification. Okay. Not for nothing that will be taking place on tonight. So I will not be doing any script reading and that's why we're here right now. Okay. Not for nothing, you guys, I want to uh, give you guys an update. I try to keep you guys current as much as I can. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this update pertaining to the uh, trial. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys now. And um, since I am using content from another channel, I will, however, be placing my banner on top of it. But here is where I get most of my updated news. Uh, B and C on YouTube is pretty um, current. Um, uh, it's between there or New York Times because this trial is taking place in Brooklyn. So um, it will be local news that we'll be covering, okay? Uh, not for nothing, BNC is wonderful. I try to um, go on there constantly to uh, check an update. As you guys see, it's like 10 to 11 um, minutes long. So bear with me, okay? But um, you guys stay tuned in regards to um, what is about to transpire on this trial, okay? So here we go. Good evening, I'm Yuri Suelga, and this is Making the Case. All right, today, prosecutors in R. Kelly's racketeering and sex trafficking trial focused heavily on the role his employees played in helping him run what they claim was a criminal enterprise. The accounts of these employees are key in proving that crimes were committed, but not all of the testimony from today benefits the prosecution. Back with me for another night to talk more about today's developments is veteran prosecutor and BNC's legal contributor, Paul Henderson. All right, Paul. So uh, we heard from R. Kelly's former um, personal assistant. She backed up some of the accuser's claims, um, uh, you know, but she also said she never witnessed Kelly with any underage girls and never witnessed any abuse. Will this help R. Kelly's defense? It, it absolutely will. That's testimony on the record that I guarantee the defense is going to raise when they make their case. They're going to probably use an exact quote from her on those two issues. And they're going to indicate to make sure that we know and are aware that this is someone that knew him and was familiar with him and his work behavior. But again, it was a mixed bag. The prosecution did score some points by having her talk about what she was familiar with, and it's going to be consistent with some of the other information and testimony that we heard in the past few weeks about the many rules he had and the very specific directions that he gave about them in terms of the rules that 
both the employees had to follow in the terms of what the women around him, the young men and women around him had to do in order to define the criminal enterprise of illegal behavior. And so when you see on the board where they're talking about punishment being real, you, you know, this is punishment both for the, the alleged victims and for the employees. And she talked about all of the ways that he enforced those rules and gave those directions. And this was corroborated, that there was yelling, that there was pay that would be, that would be docked for them to do their rules. And this was part of the power and control and authority that he exerted over people. But it was him doing it, right? So this is, for a criminal trial, it's always about the culpability of the principal. And he is the principal. So these rules are important. The tight directions are important both for the employees and for the alleged victims in this case. And that's why prosecution had to put this person on the stand. And not for nothing, but I think we need to pay attention to part of why this person indicated that they might not have been aware that anybody was underage and they might not have been aware that there was any abuse going on was because this person doesn't want to be personally liable after this trial is finished, in, independent of the liability for federal charges, but at state charges and for civil charges. And so that's really important, too. And this person did play a key role and affirmed a lot of the previous testimonies from other victims by saying that she was the one that was organizing all of their travel and telling them some of the weird rules that we were hearing about how they were supposed to interact with other people and with R. Kelly, because she did testify about that. And that's part of the reason why prosecution had to put her on and wanted her testimony as part of their evidence. Now, unlike the personal assistant, testimony from another employee, uh, Nicholas, seemed to uh, claim the opposite, uh, that Kelly always seemed to be in the company of young girls. Uh, he also said that he quit because it was a hostile work environment and he wasn't comfortable with what he was witnessing. Um, now, both his and the former assistant's testimony can be true, right? But can it hurt the defense? Well, I think it hurts the defense in, in as much as Nick, what Nicholas was talking about was consistent with what other witnesses has testified about as well. And I presume that the prosecution is going to talk about bias, which and as you know, bias is always an issue with every witness and every person that comes onto the stand to testify in a case. And so it's completely credible that people testify inconsistently with each other, but it's the jury's role to determine facts and the jury's role to determine what they believe actually happened. I believe that they put Nicholas on afterwards for him to confirm that, yes, there were strict rules. Yes, there were a lot of directions, all orchestrated by R. Kelly himself. And there were all of these things that focused on punishments or rules around or repercussions from breaking the rules or not following the directions. All, again, from R. Kelly. That's what's important here. The other thing that's important is, while Nicholas saw some of the same things that the first person testified, the personal assistant testified about, he was very clear and identified that they were young, very young girls, and that's what he noticed. I think that's going to be really important. And since they were talking about the same things, the jury's going to have to choose which one are they going to believe over the other. And I think that will be influenced by the other statements that they heard from other victims. The other thing that I think stood out to me from Nicholas's testimony today was talking about the clandestine behavior from R. Kelly when his wife was around and how they had a process to hide the girls when she came around. The fact that there was this behavior, I think, speaks in large part to how, how R. Kelly was behaving. And this whole trial has given us a real insight as to what that secret behavior was. I think that the jury's got to find that really interesting and pay attention to it. And that's going to be what they focus on as they try and determine what is actually true and whether or not he's actually guilty of the allegations the prosecution has in front of him. Now, Paul, Nicholas also talked about how um, Kelly still had girlfriends around once he was married, once he was a married man. Um, now, he said that, uh, you know, he would actually have Kelly or Kelly would actually have his assistant give his wife a note, a piece of paper that would say important is on the way. 
and he would hide Kelly's girlfriend. That doesn't address the age of these women, but here the prosecution isn't trying to, to prove that Kelly was unfaithful. We know that, but just how involved Kelly apparently got his employees in hiding things he didn't want others to see. Talk about the importance of that. Yeah, and what's really interesting here is because that's the kind of stuff that I think juries lean in and they want to hear. This whole time, I think a lot of people like myself and like this jury really wants to know about what is the celebrity like? What is their life like? What kind of things do they do? And it's little details like this that I believe a jury pauses and leans into because they want to hear, just like the testimony yesterday when they were talking about Aaliyah. We all wanted to know what is the whole thing with Aaliyah? Are we ever going to get a different side to that story about observed sexual behavior, observed illegal behavior involving her? And we got that just yesterday. And so now to hear what his wife was doing during all of that time, and this is a question that people have asked uh, throughout this trial as well, and to hear insights there, this is exactly the kind of salacious testimony that I think jurors want to hear, that I think audiences have been listening to. And because they want to know about these other celebrities and about natural questions that we have during testimony in a trial like this, I think that's what the jury focuses on. And those are really dangerous things for a jury to focus on for the defense because that's what they're paying attention to. And so in addition to having to combat the actual evidence against R. Kelly from an objective perspective, they've got to overcome the heightened attention that jurors are paying to the salacious news and information about the common questions that we all have. Like he was married, what was his wife doing during all of this? And for the, the reason that that is now inserted itself into the trial is what makes it relevant. And I think this is what the jury is juggling as they're trying to decide whether or not R. Kelly is guilty. And, you know, the, as I said, this is the information that jurors wanted to hear and to have these questions answered. What happened when his wife came around? What did R. Kelly do? Why was he acting in a kind manner? And if he was with the wife, was he doing it for authorities or for friends of the victims as well, alleged victims? Uh, now, Paul, prosecutors were also granted permission to share some audio and uh, video recordings. According to uh, court documents, Kelly can be heard accusing a woman of lying to him before assaulting her. Uh, this is the first time the jury gets to hear from Kelly thanks to these recordings. Talk about how significant this can be. Absolutely, because if R. Kelly doesn't get on the stand, the only direct impression of R. Kelly that this jury is going to have for this trial will be this evidence that the prosecution is introducing, showing him angry, showing him making orders, showing him punishing people for not following his rules and directions. That is not a positive light for R. Kelly from defense. And then that's putting pressure on them to have to put on anything else to show a different side of him, to show him as a celebrity, as a nice guy, as a philanthropist, or someone that was trying to help people around him. But I don't know how they're going to get any of that into evidence without putting him on the stand. And I don't think this is a case where I would put him on the stand. I don't expect him to take the stand. But that's why even that little snippet of information of his actual voice talking is relevant, because it's going to be influential for this jury. Again, that's the only verbiage that they have from him, the only present sense impression that they have recorded of him. And it's him executing those rules and directions, which is at the core of this entire case in terms of a racketeering charge, that what he directed, what his rules were in order to benefit illegal behavior. All right, Paul Henderson, veteran prosecutor and legal contributor. We'll see you later on in the hour. All right, so you guys were able to hear that clip and the motion has been granted. It's safe to say the motion has been granted. The audio and video will be added as evidence um, to this case, uh, to this trial. And as you guys also heard that, you know, it's not, it's, it would not do the defense well to put him on trial. Will we hear from R. Kelly? We have no idea. Uh, not for nothing, this is the information that, um, countless of us here on YouTube brought to you guys on yesterday and now we hear that it actually has been granted. So yes, here we go with these uh, bits and pieces of evidence 
um, um, that you know we we've been telling you guys about. Here um, is some of the devices um, or some of the intel of the devices that um, they found in the storage. Okay, a lot of false information had been placed out there that it was not true that they didn't find anything. Well, this is a piece of what they found you guys to say the absolute least um it's no question about uh whether it's him or not and i know a lot of people were saying well it's nothing taking place on on the um audio on the video you can't see anything well like i i tend to uh remind you guys it was an audio clipping what slammed harvey weinstein so let's not get it misconstrued you can't go around your own voice um and then there's audio and analysts um that will listen to the audio and will take different audios of singing audios of talking have him talk over things uh to be able to compare so we are not in 1919 y'all we are in 2021 where technology is just underway um they've been able to prove old cold cases um because of where we're at in technology so do not get it misconstrued like oh this is just nothing no 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 not for nothing you guys welcome to whitney d tv okay welcome 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 tell me where you guys are listening from put your city in the chat right now okay um not for nothing uh oh i am in the wrong category okay <laughs> Not for nothing. Welcome. Uh, place your city in the chat so I can know where you're tuning in from. Okay. Make sure you guys keep it cute so you won't get the boot. Okay. What that means is that you do not have to agree with me, which I mean, I'm going to be reading from the transcript. It's not really much um, there, it's just black and white. However, I will be putting my commentary in between. If you disagree with that, that's okay. But please do not spam my chat with your free R. Kelly. I guarantee you, R. Kelly is not looking in on my channel. Okay. I think he's focused more so on the trial, okay? And you may want to take that word that will be highly supported. It is not here, okay? I'm biased here, but I'm absolutely fair to say the least, okay? So make sure you guys keep it cute so you won't get the boot, okay? Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, okay? Sharing is caring. Uh, click out of the chat if you're on your phone and click that share button so you're able to um, extend this video out to all of your platforms that you may be associated with, okay? Want to take it a step further and support my channel? Join the channel so you can be able to support me on a monthly basis okay and not for nothing if you like to support my channel monetarily direct here is my cash app it is whitney d 2014 make sure that you get that money symbol okay it will also be located boom right there at the bottom if you do not have cash app i do have paypal okay and that's how you can send your form of support to me okay not for nothing let's go ahead and get into everything Tell me what you guys think about what you guys heard in regards to the grant of the motion of um, receiving those evidence of audio and video. Uh, what do you guys think in regards to um, the evidence being um, brought in? What do you guys uh, feel as uh, in regards to um, what is the, what this is going to do? Okay, um, in regards to um, the trial. Not for nothing, um, I hope you guys join me tonight. As I stated, we will be getting into the first installment of Where Were the Parents, uh, where we take a worldwide, um, we look at worldwide situations um, that cause us to ask ourselves, where were the parents in this situation? In lieu of everything going on with the trial, everybody's asking, where were the parents? Where were the parents? You get one crop of bad parents and all the parents are under um the same analysis, understandably so, but we're going to actually take a look in the R. Kelly trial uh, amongst other worldwide situations, and we're going to look over them and ask those situations as well. Where were the parents? Okay, so tune in tonight at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time um, as we just delve into different situations, okay? And not for nothing, let's go ahead and give a shout out to the R. Kelly case open discussion. I got introduced to this um, wonderful group on Facebook by way of Robert Keller, who also provides transcripts on a regular inside this group, along with the other awesome administrators. So you guys, please head on over to, to them, okay? We will be getting our transcripts from 
um, the R. Kelly case open discussion. So shouts out to them um, and their wonderful admits because they're on this case to say the absolute least, okay? Not for nothing, you guys. That's where we're going to be reading from. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys. We're going to get into the rest of the transcripts pertaining to um, John Doe, number two. Um, this is where I will be reading uh, my transcripts from because um, this is going to correlate with our first story on tonight, okay? So make sure you guys, again, tune in um, for that, okay? We left off the other day at 1850. Um, they were in a form of a uh, recess, okay? And so we're just going to finish off there, okay? Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into this, all right? All right, proceedings. Afternoon session in open court, jury not present. Parties present, the clerk. All eyes, the judge. Uh-oh, sorry, y'all. The judge. Everybody can have a seat. All right, let's um, get the witness. Are we, no, uh, we got everybody already, okay. Um, anything before we bring the witness? I'm sorry, Mr. Kennick. Yes, a brief non-record uh, uh, issue, Your Honor, the judge. Sure, um, he can still go uh, get the witness though, right? Mr. Kennick, yes, the judge, thanks. There was a pause, witness enters the courtroom. Are we ready for the jury? Okay, let's get them in. There was a pause. Jury enters the courtroom. The clerk, you may be seated. The judge, all right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. We are ready to resume with the direct examination of the witness. Go ahead. Miss Gideas, thank you. The clerk, the witness is reminded he's still under oath. And for you guys um, that aren't aware, this is John Doe number one. Um, and he is uh, finishing, with, finishing with the direct examination of him. Lewis, yes. Ms. Giddies continues the examination. Earlier today, you testified about the first time that you met the defendant who was, um, do you recall the name of the individual who the defendant wanted to be put in touch with that day at the McDonald's, uh, one of the managers. Do you remember her first name? Valerie. And no shade, no tea. I really think that that was just a, a, um, a, a lure, if you will. He really wanted this little boy's um, number and stuff like that, but to distract and play it off, I think he asked for the manager's um, to, to give it to the manager as well. But I really think Quiet is killed. This Negro didn't want nothing to do with Valerie, the, the lady or whatever. It was just kind of the uh, uh, diversion, if you will. And how, if at all, did Valerie respond when you told Valerie that the defendant wanted to meet her or talk to her? She really didn't know who he was. Before we broke, uh, you testified about a time when you were at the defendant's house and you were intoxicated. Do you recall which room you were in when you woke up and saw the defendant? Uh, it was another room off uh, from the studio. Okay. And what, if anything, do you recall happening when or seeing when you woke up? I just remember leaving. Uh, I just remember him leaving when I woke up. And what, if anything, made you believe that something sexually happened uh, between you and the defendant that, that day? Uh, because my pants was kind of unbuttoned. Ugh. Your pants were unzipped or unbuttoned. Is that what you said? Yes. And to your knowledge, uh, had they been unbuttoned before? No. And what, if anything, did the defendant do? You recall the defendant saying anything to you during that encounter or after that encounter? No. I'm sure that the witness and everyone uh, was in evidence as Government Exhibit 69. Uh, without saying the individual's name, do you recognize who this is? Yes. Uh, what is her first name? Um, you can say her first name. Dominique. And how do you know Dominique? Went to school together and also worked together. Uh, she went to Hillcrest. 
she went to Hillcrest. Sorry, y'all. Yes. And were you and Dominique the same age or different ages? Different. And she was younger or older than you? Younger. By how much? I believe one to two years. And you were dis you ever discussed the defendant with Dominique? Yes. When was the first time that you discussed the defendant with Dominique? Um, we were at McDonald's. And you testified earlier that you worked with Dominique. Uh, where did you work with Dominique together? Uh, in McDonald's. And which McDonald's was this? Christian Park, Illinois. So a different one than the Markham McDonald's where you met the defendant. Correct. And what caused you to discuss the defendant with Dominique? I was leaving work and I had locked my keys in the car. And Rob House is kind of like maybe 10 minutes away uh, from there. So I had, uh, when I went back in, I was joking with Dominique, like maybe I should see if my Uncle Rob will help me get in, uh, in my car. And how did Dominique respond? She said, you know Rob too? I was like, yeah. She was like, that's my boyfriend. I'm like, I didn't believe it. <laughs> Chill. So it's safe to say Dominique will stay, take the stand. And allegedly from what I heard, she's already in New York. What, if anything, did she do or say after that? She showed me the tattoo behind her ear. And what was on the tattoo? It was his, Rob's initial. And what happened after that? Uh, she said that she can call him and get him to help me get in the car. And were you, did she, in fact, then call the defendant? Yes. Were you able to hear that conversation? No. What if anything happened after the conversation? She just told, uh, she told me that he told her to hang up. Meanwhile, she got off the phone with him. Do not talk to me. Stay away from me. Did you continue to associate with Dominique after that, after the defendant told her not to speak with you? Yes. And to your knowledge, did the defendant ever learn that you um, continued to speak with Dominique? Yes. How did you learn that the defendant learned you were still talking with Dominique? Mr. Canning, hearsay ob objection. The judge, are you objecting? I hear you not I, I I hear you not that good. Mr. Canning, yes, I am. The judge, well, from uh, whom did you hear it? Lewis responded, I'm sorry. Uh what was that? What was the question? Excuse me. Did you ever have, uh, how did you learn that the defendant found out that you continue to associate with Dominique, the judge? If that's a conversation with someone other than the defendant, I will sustain the um, objection. Uh, you saying how the judge, did you speak to the defendant about it? Did you speak to Mr. Kelly about it? Yes, the judge. All right. Um, is that okay? What What happened? Uh, Lewis said, well, uh, he, you want to know how he first found out or did you overhear a conversation between the defendant and Dominique? Yes. And where were you um, when this conversation took place? She was on the phone. Um, we was on the phone. Me and Dominique was on the phone. And at some point, did you hear the defendant during that conversation? Yes. What did you hear the defendant say? Uh, he said, who you on the phone with? And then uh, she just dropped the phone and he got on the phone. And what did he say to you? He said, uh, he kept saying hello, hello, and I just hung up. And this conversation, this telephone call, uh, where you were speaking with Dominique and the defendant got on the phone. Was this before or after you met the defendant at the drive-thru in Markham uh, McDonald's? After. 
Was it several years after? Yes. And when you spoke with Dominique that day, uh, were you calling from your phone number? Yes. How if, um, at all did your relationship with the defendant change after that telephone conversation? Uh, he really didn't want nothing to do with me. The defendant stopped having anything to do with you or didn't want anything to do with you. Um, is that what you said? Yes. I want to direct your attention to October of 2011. What if anything happened then? I'm not sure what's your question. Uh, were you arrested in October of 2011? Yes. What were you arrested for? Robbery. Did you in fact commit the robbery? Yes. How did you resolve your plea? How did you resolve your case? We do. You pled guilty? Yes. And do you recall what your sentence was? Five years probation. Were you the only one charged with that particular robbery or were there other people charged with the robbery? Others. I'm showing what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 68. Was the individual shown in Government Exhibit 68 one of the individuals charged with the same robbery? Yes. And after the after he was charged, uh, was he immediately released on bail or did he remain in jail for um, a time? He remained in jail for some time. Did you have a conversation with the defendant about the individual shown in government exhibit 68? Yes. What was the nature of the conversation? Uh, he has him. He had asked, have I seen him? And uh, he was asking, he said, um, he haven't heard from him. He been trying to get in touch with him. Who asked you if you had seen the individual shown in 68? Robert Kelly. Did you tell the defendant where the individual shown in 68 was? Yes. What, if anything, did the defendant say? Uh, he asked why he was still in there, and I told him because he didn't have bail money. And what happened? Once I told him the certain amount, he just said, oh, my God, I, I don't have it. Um, at some point, did the defendant provide some money for the, for the individual bail? Mr. Canick, objection. The judge sustained unless you had a conversation with the defendant about it. Lewis, yes, I did. The judge, okay, you spoke to Mr. Kelly about this subject, about giving bail money. Yes. The judge, all right, go ahead. And what, if anything, did the defendant say or do? He did. Um, so... <sighs> He gave me a certain amount uh, that he did have, which was $2,000. The defendant gave you $2,000. Yes. And what did you understand that money was for? For his bail. For the individual shown in Government Exhibit 68. Yeah. Yeah. Was that $2,000 ultimately used to pay the individual in 68's bail? No. What did you do with the money? Kept it. And was the individual shown in 68 released on bail at some point? Yes. I want to direct your attention to 2018. How would you characterize your relationship with the defendant at that time? I would say we had a great, a good relationship, more of a friendship. And where would you spend time? Did you continue to spend time with the defendant? Yes. Where did you spend time with the defendant in or about 2018? Mostly playing basketball. And would you see him outside of the basketball courts as well? Yes. Uh, where would you see him? 
either we'd be at parties or uh, we'd be at cigar lounges or that's mostly it. Or we go out of town or like a bar or somewhere, a club or something. Where did you attend parties with the defendant in the studio in Chicago? Do you recall the street where that studio was located? Justine. Um, it was located on Justine Street. Yes. Did there come a time when you and the defendant and the individual shown in Government Exhibit 68 were all in the same place together after the defendant was no longer living in Olympia Fields? Yes. Where was it that the three of you were all together? At the Trump Towers. What was at the Trump Towers when the three of you were there? Sorry, what was the question? Who, if anything, I mean, who, if anyone, lived at the Trump Towers when the three of you were there? Robert Kelly, the defendant? Yes. How did it come? How did it come to be that the three of you were at the Trump Towers together? He called me and told me that uh, we need to fix our relationship, uh, me and the individual, and that we need to be more like uh, we are like brothers. So we need to fix the situation. Who had called you and told you that you needed to fix the situation? Robert, the defendant. Yes. And what had you testified earlier today before we broke the for lunch that you brought the individual shown in Government Exhibit 68 uh, to the defendant's house when you were still in high school, correct? Yeah. And what was your relationship with uh, this individual when you were in high school? Best friends. And at some point, did your relationship, I mean, did your friendship uh, deteriorate? Yes. And was that prior to the time when the defendant said that the that you needed to fix your relationship with this individual in uh, Government Exhibit 68? Yes. What happened after the defendant said that you needed to fix your relationship with him, uh, with the individual in 68? Uh, he had told both of us to come down, so we both rode down there to the defendant's house at Trump um, at the Trump Towers. Yes. What happened when you arrived? We all went into like a living room, you know, a living room area, and we was all sitting there, and he had instructed me and the individuals to touch uh, each other and kiss each other. Uh, we didn't really want to because we friends. We grew up together. So we didn't do it. What did you do at that time? I sat there and I watched him. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So sad. So he basically was finna he was basically instructing them to do uh homosexual um activities, but Lewis wasn't into that. Huh. Where were you when this happened? Sitting on the couch in the Trump Towers. Yes. And what did the defendant want you and the individual shown in 68 to do? Um kiss each other? Anything more? Uh, he wanted us to touch each other. Where did he want you to touch each other? My province. Did you want to do that? No. From what you did, the individual in 68 appeared to want to do that? No. Mm. Did you express that to the defendant? No. What happened? Since we wasn't doing that, uh, since we weren't doing what was told, he told the individual, come on, uh, let's show him how it's supposed to be done. When you said he told the individual who is the he in that 
sentence, Robert. And I think going forward, uh, to the extent you can, let's try to uh, refer to the individual as number 68. Um, is that okay? Number 68. Okay. Um, so the defendant told the individual number 68, government's exhibit 68, to do what? Uh, let's show him how it's supposed to be done. What, if anything, did you observe? Uh, I saw them having sex together. Mm, mm, mm. What did you do after that? I'm really believing, y'all, that this is John Doe number two. This is the nephew. I was instructed to go sit in the bathroom. Who instructed you to go sit in the bathroom? Robert, the defendant. Yes. During the encounter that you witnessed between the defendant and the individual in 68, who, if anyone, appeared to be in charge? Robert, how so? He instructed us what to do. When you say us, are you referring to yourself and individual 68? Yes. I'm showing you what is in evidence as government's exhibit, exhibit 78. Without saying who it is, do you recognize the individual shown in um, government's exhibit 78? Yes. Have you ever had a sexual encounter with the individual shown in a, uh, government's exhibit 78? Yes. Now, at the time when you had the that sexual encounter with this individual in government's exhibit 78, did you know her name? No. How was um, it that, where was it that you had a sexual encounter with this individual uh, in the studio on Justine? Whose studio? Robert, the defendants, yes. Why were you at the studio? Uh, we were all hanging out that night. We, was, uh, we went out for some cigarettes. Uh, and eventually we went back to the studio to listen to some of the music. Who was hanging out that night? I can say the name. Yes. Uh, me, Robert, and Julius. And who did you understand Julius to be? A&R? What is A&R? Somebody to help you develop your music? How did you know Julius uh, from the parties? People at the party telling me who he was. Through the defendant that you met him. Yes. Or saw him. Yes. And did all three of you, you, Julius, and the defendants, um, go back to the defendant's studio on Justine Street? Yes. And what, if anything, were you doing when you went back to the defendant's studio? First, we sat at the bar for a while, and then I had asked him, did he have any new music he was working on? Uh, he took us to the back area to the studio and started listening to the music. Who did you ask if he had um, any new music? Robert. What happened after that? After uh, we sat there, the same song kept playing over and over. Um, he started to doze off. When he dozed off, I was letting him know that I was leaving for the day. Uh, where was the defendant at this time? Uh, he was all sitting on the on on a couch in the studio. Do you remember what room in the studio you were in? Uh, from what I'm told, it was the main studio in there. And what, if anything, do you remember in that studio? I remember the engineer. Oh, Mm, mm, mm. All the mixing materials uh, and the keyboard, everything. You testified a moment ago that he dosed off. Who dosed off? Robert. At that time when the defendant dosed off, where was Julius? He was still sitting on the couch. What happened next? I woke Rob up and told him I was leaving. He said, okay, uh, you can walk me out. Instead, uh, we went into another room. 
who went into another room? Me and Rob. Where was Julius at that time? Could you tell? He still stayed in the studio. And do you remember which room you went into? Like another room, like right next door to the studio. What happened when you went next door to the studio? He told me uh, he wanted me to, he wanted me to have sex with his girlfriend. How, how did he describe his girlfriend? Just told me she was a girlfriend. How did you respond? I said, okay. What happened? Uh, he had left me in there for a minute. Went and got her, brought her back. And then when she got there, he instructed her what to do. When you say he left you in there for a minute, did you literally mean a minute? Uh, probably like I would say maybe 10, 15 minutes. When he returned, who was with him? The individual. The individual shown in uh, Government's Exhibit 78? Yes. Prior to that time, uh, had you seen this individual, the one shown in Government's Exhibit 78? No. Just looked maybe familiar from women from the basketball court. But I never seen her like in person met her. Had the defendant ever introduced you to the woman in 78? No. What happened when the defendant and the woman in government's exhibit 78 came into the room? He instructed her what to do. What did you hear the defendant say to her? Told her to give me oral sex. And how was the individual in 78 dressed uh, when she came in, entered the room? She had on just a t-shirt. And what happened when she came into the room and after the defendant told her to give you oral sex? She then gave me oral sex. Where was the defendant when that happened? Standing off into the corner. What, if anything, was the defendant doing when that happened? Recording. What was he using to record? iPad. Mm, mm, mm. This nigga. I promise you, this is a hand over fist case, to say the least. How were you able to see that? I was still sitting uh, down in a chair. She was on her knees. I uh, could see him right there. Could you see the iPad? Yes. Could you see what was shown on the iPad? Uh, could I see what was shown? Uh-huh. Uh, could you redirect uh, your question? Sure. Were you able to see what was being recorded on the iPad. No. Why not? Uh, it's face towards him. And what, if anything, did the defendant do or say while the individual shown in 78 was giving you oral sex, aside from the recording? What was he saying? Uh-huh. Just telling her call him daddy call him by his name <laughs> so this dude was instructing them to say okay anyways and the defendant was telling the individual in 78 to call him call who daddy M me at the moment during that encounter, who, if anyone, uh, was giving instructions? Robert, what, if anything, did you do while the defendant gave instructions? Sat there. Did you say anything? No. What, if anything, did the individual in government's Exhibit 78 say during that encounter? She just did as she was told. She didn't say nothing except call me by my name and call me daddy. To be clear, 
I don't want you to say your name, but did the defendant use your real name when he told her to call you by your name? Yes. How did you respond when the individual in government's exhibit 78 was giving you oral sex with the defendant in the room? How did I react? Yes. I was just sitting there. I really couldn't get really excited because it was an uncomfortable situation. What made it uncomfortable? Because Robert was just standing there. The defendant. Yes. Uh, did you want the individual shown in government's exhibit 78 to giving you oral sex in front of the defendant? No. What, if anything, did the defendant say? Uh, he seen I wasn't getting excited from what was going on. He was like, I'm confused. I don't know what you want. I don't want if you want. I don't know if you want a woman or a man. Just to be clear, for the record, uh, when you say that you weren't getting excited, uh, do you mean you weren't sexually responding to what was happening? Yes. Mr. Canick leading the judge overruled. Excuse me. During the time that you spent with the defendant at his house or at his studio, and by the way, before I ask that question, um, you testified earlier about the studio at Olympia Fields and also um, about the studio on Justine Street. Have you visited any other studios that the defendant used? Yes. What were those on Ohio Street? Do you recall when the defendant, um, when you say Ohio uh, Street in what city? Chicago, Illinois. Do you recall when the defendant was using the studio on Ohio Street? I'm not sure of the dates or the year. Um, I know it was in um, between Olympia Fields and Justine. So it was after his time in Olympia Fields and before his time in the studio on Justine Street. Correct. During the time uh, that you spent with the defendant at his house or at his studios, have you ever taken anything from him? Yes. Just to be clear, I'm talking about other than the time you took that money uh, that he provided for the individual number 68 spell. What have you taken? A camcorder. Whoa, yikes. When did you take the camcorder from the defendant? You said what? Yes, uh, we was, oh, you said when? Yes, uh, we was, uh, me and one of my friends was at a party most of the time. You got to wait around before you get to the party sometimes. Uh, there was a camcorder sitting on a desk when a runner, um, and I asked the runner about it. Um, he had said he thinks it was somebody that left it there from a party. It was there for some days, so I took it. When you say a runner, who are you referring to? What do you mean by a runner? Someone who works for Robert. Where was this that this happened? The house in Olympia Fields? What, if anything, did you do with, the, with that camcorder? I took it home and watched it. What was on the camcorder? It was just him rehearsing. The defendant rehearsing. Yes. And what happened to that camcorder? Uh, later on, my friend and I um, 
called me um, and told me to give it back. The individual who called you, was it the individual shown in Government's Exhibit 68, which I'm putting on the screen? Yes. What did what did uh, do you with what did you do with the camcorder at that time? Gave it to him. Uh, he took it back. You gave it to the, the to this individual. Yes. In 68 for the record. Yes. Aside from that camcorder, was there anything else that you took from the defendant or the defendant's residence? Okay, we're going to stop right there. We're going to continue um, on page 1873. Let's go ahead and get into this discussion. 1875, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of the discussion in regards to what we just heard. Oh, and it was a, a lot. Go ahead and put your comments in the chat. I am in the chat at this time, and I'm going to be um, reading over them and, and um, um, uh, responding to your comments. Wow, 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 to say the least. So we hear about um, him um, having sexual relations with another school friend who I guess we're going to be really, we're going to possibly be hearing from. Um, and what I'm thinking, maybe it could be John Doe number two, or this could be another John Doe that, you know, we're, we'll never hear from. But we are hearing that he had some kind of uh, sexual relation with this uh, John Doe. And this John Doe was younger than him. So this is interesting to say the least. Um, not only that, we hear that, um, you know, this, this dude has a history of stealing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, we hear about um, him stealing, you know, money in regards to um, R. Kelly and, and that situation. And then we also hear about him um, causing him to have sexual relations with another um, young lady who he claimed to be his girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? So this is interesting. And this is stuff that nobody's talking about. Uh, again, shout out to the R. Kelly case open discussion where we just got through reading the transcripts from. Uh, this is a very engaging and very resourceful um, group to be in. It's located on Facebook and it's very um it's very dual sided. You can be for um, the support of R. Kelly or you can be against it, but um, they uh, allow you guys to have your own opinion in this group. It's really good. And they always post different updates in regards to this particular um, trial. So um, shouts out to the R. Kelly case, uh, open discussion. Shouts out to Robert Keller, who put me on to this group and who's been just um, helping in regards to transcripts. Uh, not for nothing. Oh my gosh, like the very informative to say the least. Do you think that this particular um uh, uh I want to say witness, if you will, um hurt or hindered the case of the, the defendants? Of uh, you know, we haven't heard the cross-examination just yet. We're gonna get there, but not for nothing. This is to lead up to segue into tonight's um uh first series of where were the parents okay well we look at some where wide situations um, um that caused us to ask where were the parents um in regards to this trial in regards to other different where wide situations uh we're going to take a look at in lieu of everything going on with this r kelly trial everybody's asking where were the parents where were the parents so um Rightfully so. So we're going to dig deep into different situations, including this uh, particular trial. So I ask that you guys tune in on tonight at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time here at the same bat place, um, same bat time here on Whitney DTV, okay? Not for nothing, you guys. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below, okay? Why are you there? Um, please take out the time to like, share, um, and subscribe to the channel, okay? Now, if you guys aren't busy on Friday... Tune in here for...
that's why right. we get it popping here on Whitney D TV every Friday night with a round of music and combos with your girl Whitney D. I'll be on the ones and twos, um, taking in your requests and just talking and having some conversations. We play games, so we just have a good old time. And it's every Friday night here on Whitney D TV, which is loosen up. I do some transcripts reading earlier that day, um, but then we transcend um, into uh, music and combos here. Um, so if you guys are doing anything check us out um it is pre-scheduled um so you guys can as well see that link to go ahead and click the uh reminder um i will place it in the chat somewhere where you guys can actually tune in and get yourself geared up we have a good time on friday night um uh, with uh music and combos and it's just a lot of fun so you guys are more than welcome to tune in on friday as well and that is something that we'll be doing uh, on a weekly basis, uh, as well as the um, uh, where were uh, the parents Wednesdays, okay? Not for nothing, you guys. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I will see you guys on tonight. Um, I pray you guys are having a super stupid blessed Wednesday, to say the least. You guys stay um, encouraged and uh, stay positive and know that the best is still yet to come for you. Um, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Okay. I pray you guys have a great Wednesday. Um, now it's your turn. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. If you like to support my channel, my cash app and PayPal information is located, um, at the bottom of the screen as it goes across. Okay. Not for nothing. If you guys would like to send me a beautiful email, just a love email, or you like to share your story with me, I promise you it will stay between me and you, or you would like to send me anything pertaining to the trial or some kind of conspiracy theory or what have you, send it over to reviews with ED at gmail.com. I promise you I will respond, okay? Not for nothing, if you are trying to embark on this YouTube journey or you have a business that you'd like to get up and running and you need a website, a logo, or as I stated with YouTube, you need just a rebranding idea pertaining to an intro, outro, banners, or what have you, Hit me up at WhitneyDavisPlanning.com or send me an email to WhitneyDavisPlanning at gmail.com, okay? Uh, not for nothing, guys. Thank you so very much for tuning into the channel. I pray you guys have a great day. And I'll see you tonight uh, for um, What Were the Parents Wednesday, okay? Love you guys so very much. I'm Addie 5000. Bye. <laughs>